Hey guys, welcome to the day in the life of an online TEFL teacher. And boy, let me just tell you, it is the best job ever. Let's see why. Hey guys, my name's Audrey and I am originally from sunny California. However, I now live in Milan, Italy and I am a TEFL certified online teacher. That's right, I wanted to invite you in to what one day in the life of an online teacher looks like because it's a bit different than a normal nine to five. All right guys, I'm gonna hop in the shower because it's seven o'clock and my first appointment's at eight. See you soon. Hey guys, so now it is 7.30. I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to eat breakfast in a little while because I have a little bit of a break today. I have a 30 minute gap in between two clients. I'll go ahead and show you my schedule later on. I just wanted to say I am so happy the weekend is over um, because this weekend I had I had 18 one day and then 15 the next day. So when I had 18 on Saturday, I worked from 3 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock in the evening. And then on Sunday, I worked 4.30 in the morning until 3.30 in the evening. So my weekends are my busiest days. Um, you don't have to do that. I'm just crazy and I like to do it. I make really good money on the weekends. So I do it and then I get so happy when the week starts. Of course, the best thing about working from home is the commute. I mean, look at how quick it is. So the funny thing about this is I actually work in a basement hallway, and the reason I do so is because my boyfriend and I live with his family until we figure out which country we want to move to. So for my backboard, I just have everything up on a pegboard, and here are some of my props that make it easy for me to um, carry them around. What's nice is when my boyfriend and I travel, I'm able to throw all of this into a backpack and get up and go. That was one thing with my props. The only thing I spent money on were are actually these headphones that were six euros uh, but everything else I wanted to be small and compactable I don't think that you need to go out and spend a whole bunch of money on big props you just need your basics with a bunch of color now let's get into the paper props. So all this stuff I made at home. I printed it out and colored everything in myself. It's super easy. I added some popsicle sticks or pencils to keep them where I could hold them. So I have a bunch of animals, then I have fruit. If I have fruit with me, I'll go ahead and use real fruit instead. But if I don't, of course I have a prop for it. I have faces. We have farm animals, then we go into more exotic animals that live in like the desert, the forest, the rainforest, literally anywhere in the world, have some more animal stuff. And then in the back, I have just some things that I like to do with my regulars. I don't use too many props with my regulars. Uh, but it depends on the lesson. So, like, this is for the school supply where we learn coloring a picture, writing her name. So, I have some stuff for that. Then we have stuff where we learn about things in the garden. So, I have grass, I have ladybugs, I have butterfly, reins, an umbrella, uh, then flies, spiders, and spider webs. So honestly, my props are pretty basic, but I, you know, my students like them and I could carry them around easy and I didn't spend a whole bunch of money on it. So yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, and it's great to just have everything in this binder so I could go ahead and just pick it up and ready to go. Okay, now I have about five minutes until class, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in my charger. I'm going to plug in my headphones, and I'm going to turn on the iPad. I want to make sure that everything is running smoothly, as we know technology sometimes is hit or miss. Today I have 12 classes. I normally have 14. As you can see, I have two 30-minute breaks that are usually filled. However, after school activities have started, so my schedule is changing around. And then I have an hour lunch because I'll be doing four hours without any break. Today we are reviewing my family. And within this, we are going to review 
which family members that she remembers. So I'm going to ask her to circle the grandparents, the parents, the brother, and the baby. It's time to head upstairs and get some tea and some cookies. I live in Italy, so this is a typical Italian breakfast. I'm going to go ahead and also spend a little bit of time with my new kitten because, well, look at her. She is absolutely adorable. Who wouldn't want to snuggle with her? From this regular, I always get a little hello picture as soon as I log in, and she's always so much fun in class. Here we're going to be playing a game about our five senses. So I went ahead and grabbed some of my paper props of my nose, of a stuffed animal, and such. But I also want to use TPR. I think it's always very important to have TPR because it's a way to catch the children's attention. If you're just holding up a piece of paper, they're not always going to be focused on that. So you have to match that with your total physical response, which means lots of pointing, lots of silly faces and lots of silly actions then these students will usually mimic what you are doing on their end which is what you want them to do because then they will be able to understand what they are learning so right here I have sniffing so she started sniffing all over it's a lot of fun Another thing that I love teaching about is different cultures. So today we're learning about three different flags in the color of each flag. I didn't have any paper flags for these countries or for any country. So what did I do? I grabbed my big crayons and I asked her which color each flag was, how many colors were in each flag, and even I added some wrong colors so then she could correct me. I also like adding correction into it because then she's able to tell me I'm wrong in a nice way, but also explain what is wrong and correct it. This is a very good thing if they're able to explain the answer and not just give it to you. She did great, so she got her third superstar, which also gives her a super bear. Oh my, okay, I finally finished four hours in a row of class. It's kind of nice because I have a very good balance of um, young regulars and older regulars, so I never get bored throughout my days because my lessons are usually never the same. But after four hours of no bathroom breaks and no food, I'm going to run upstairs, go eat some lunch. Then we're going to go on a little bit of a drive and I'll show you around my town. And then you're in luck because I'm going to show you to the best gelateria in the world. <laughs> Let's go. It is 4 p.m., which means I am starving, so luckily my boyfriend's mom leaves me a plate. Now we're going to head into Inzago. It's a nice town. It's right outside of Milan, but it has that small Italian feel that I absolutely love. It has a beautiful river, which I just love walking, and then the small town is filled with colors, but also has that old Italian feel. As you're walking down, we're actually going to head to the church. It's it's our main hotspot of the town, as well as it has a beautiful bell tower. Now we're going to walk through the courtyard and we're going to head to the gelateria. I am going to take you into my favorite small town gelateria that is a two minute walk from my house. So here it is. Let's check it out. After a long day of work, this is actually the only place that I want to be. I come here, I grab two scoops of my favorite ice cream, which is Cremino and chocolate. Like I said, this is my favorite gelateria, and luckily it's two minutes away from my house, which is actually a bad thing because I come here almost every single day during the summertime. So I'm going to go enjoy this and get to bed so I can teach tomorrow. See you soon. Bye.